VO3 is a completely fine piece of software. And I know you expected me to say that VO3 is a total piece of shit, but you see, I've had a change of heart. And no, it isn't because I'm genuinely worried about Google never monetizing me after I talked mad shit about them on their own platform for several weeks. <laughs> No, it's actually because I just spent the last few days testing the VO3 Scene Builder, which is a key feature of VO3 and is actually the biggest piece of shit that has ever been pushed out of a butthole. And by comparison, it makes the rest of VO3 look like the pinnacle of technological fucking achievement in the modern era. Guys, this thing is so busted, I honestly don't even know where to begin. Nothing works. Nothing even pretends to work. Every single feature is broken in some fundamental way. The user interface makes me want to gouge my own eyes out with a spork, and I genuinely think that using it may have given me a brain tumor. In this video, I tried out three different experiments to test the scene builder and push it to its limits. And spoiler alert, it was a total f***ing catastrophe. So let's get into it. So, how does this thing even work? Well, as with everything else, VO3, there are apparently no guides, instructions, best practices, or documentation of any kind on how to use this thing anywhere on the internet. Which is pretty wild, considering that this thing has been out for a few weeks now. You'd think that somebody would have come up with something but apparently not. As a reminder, the VO3 FAQ doesn't even mention this thing as a feature. So I'm guessing it was just slapped on at the last minute and nobody knows what to do with it. Based on context clues and what little I've fiddled with it already before starting this video, my understanding is that it's meant to allow you to use an existing clip as a starting point that you can then either extend, which means to continue the clip by using the final frame as a starting point for another clip or jump to, which I guess would be for things like jump cuts or changes in perspective within the same scene. And I imagine that the purpose of the scene builder is to allow users to maintain continuity of characters, objects, and environments between different clips. Again, this is just my interpretation and I could be wrong, but it seems reasonable given the way that the tool is structured and labeled. So how to go about testing this thing? Well, first off, given that I had no idea how it was supposed to work and how many credits I was likely to burn through, I decided to do everything using the VO2 fast option. This way, I would only burn through 10 credits per attempt instead of 100, allowing me to do 10 times as many tests with the same amount of credits. And I know that this will exclude audio, but if you think about it, audio isn't really that important here. As far as I'm aware, speech isn't even available when using the scene builder features, so if all we're getting is sound effects or music, I can just add that on the back end on my own if I really want to. So all of the clips you're gonna see in this video were made using the VO2 fast option. Beyond that, I think it makes sense to try out the extended and jump to features separately. And since extend seems more straightforward, let's start with that. Test one, the Lindy Hop debacle. By the way, try saying Lindy Hop debacle five times fast. <laughs> Lindy hop debacle, Lindy hop debacle. For the first test, I wanted to see how far we could push the extend feature by just extending the same clip with the same prompt over and over and over again until something breaks. As many of you have so helpfully pointed out in the comments, I suck at writing prompts. But on the other hand, I've probably had sex more recently than anyone who's left one of these comments, so checkmate, I guess. For the sake of these tests, I had a buddy of mine who is an absolute wizard at prompts help me out, and this is what he came up with. Feel free to pause if you want to take notes, but it essentially just describes two people, a man in black and a woman in red, swing dancing in a white featureless room. And this is the clip that it generated, which actually looks pretty good, considering that we're using the lowest possible quality setting. We have vibrant colors and a lot of contrast, clear facial expressions, some wonky stuff with the body movements and clothing, but for our purposes, that doesn't really matter a whole lot. Now we just take this clip and go into the scene builder and choose the extend option. We copy paste the exact same quote verbatim, generate, and then repeat this process 20 times, which should give us a series of connected clips lasting around 160 seconds or about two and a half minutes. However, that brings us to our very first big issue. For whatever reason, while editing, I had to cut off the final second of each clip in order for them to be coherent and line up visually. I would have said that this was somehow user error, but every single clip had to be exactly seven seconds long in order to line up with the clip preceding it. So clearly this was either a bug on their end or some weird design feature that I have no understanding of. 
This is terrible for two reasons. Firstly, and most importantly, it adds a really obnoxious extra step to the editing process. I only had to do 20 of these. Imagine if you had hundreds or even thousands of these extended clips and you had to edit the last second off of each and every one of them to get them to all line up. But also there's the actual financial cost of the time being cut away. Remember, if you're using anything other than the lowest quality setting like me, these clips have a minimum value of $2 per eight seconds or 25 cent per second. This means that over these 20 clips, we would have lost 20 seconds or $5 of value through no fault of our own. This is not a huge amount of money at this scale, but again, if you're using hundreds or thousands of these clips, it will add up over time. So we're not off to a great start here, but it gets better. <laughs> Let's talk about the quality. Right away from the first clip leading into the second clip, we see a significant drop in quality. For comparison, here is a still image of the same frame from the first and second clip. For whatever reason, even though these are both generated using the same prompt and the same quality setting, the extended clip basically always looks just a little bit worse than the original. As we continue, we can see that the scene slowly degrades over time, losing quality, sharpness, color, and vibrancy. By clip four, the facial features for both characters are basically indistinguishable. By clip eight, the woman's flower has completely disappeared. And with each successive clip, the color becomes faded and dingy and green. By the final clip, it looks like a low resolution shot from the matrix. Just look at the difference in color between these four clips. This feels like we're Xeroxing the same page of a document over and over and over and over again until the final result is barely recognizable. In conclusion, extending clips causes a loss of time and money at a rate of one to eight seconds and a significant loss of quality and detail with each extension. Clearly, for clips in VO3, the shorter the lifespan, the better. Me things don't usually have to exist this long. It's getting weird. Test number two, the man behind the mask. For my next experiment, I wanted to test the memory of the extend feature. I wanted to see if the extended clips kept any context or details from all the clips in the scene or just the one immediately previous to it, as this would be pretty important for maintaining cohesion in a longer sequence of clips. I was expecting complete failure, but there was only one way to know for sure. In order to understand VO3, I would need to become VO3. I would need to hack into the mainframe and investigate from the inside. I fed VO3 my very own avatar picture, along with this extremely sexy prompt, and this is what it generated. Guys, I don't know if you knew this, but I'm apparently sexy as hell. I mean, look at this twirly mustache Lalo Salamanca looking motherfucker right here. <clears throat> anyway, we have science to do. For this test, I wanted to have the scene builder hide the man's face and then reveal it again in a later clip to see if it would remember what he looked like. Should be pretty simple, right? To start with, I told VO to put a pillowcase over the man's face and it obliged. But hiding all of that raw sexual energy is a crime against humanity. So now we take it back off. The first time I saw this, I just about <laughs> my pants. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> so why don't we try that again, Vio? You wanna you wanna give it another go? Let's let's try one more time. I'm sure it's not that noticeable. <laughs> Why do they not have eyes? <laughs> Vio, what the f is this even? Okay, maybe covering his entire face was too much. What if we only partially cover his face? Vio, have him put on a ski mask. Okay, that's, that's a little weird, but all right, that'll do. And now uh, have him take the mask off again. M no, no, Vio, that's... Okay, that's nothing. That isn't a thing. Go, uh, to go ahead and have him take the mask off now, please. Please have him... No, that's very much the opposite of what I just asked you to do. Please have him take the mask off. Take it. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. No, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Good. Instant replay on that. Hang on. We got a... Okay, so we peel the mask off and take the mustache with it to reveal a much uglier man. With a very different mustache beneath. So, <laughs> you wanna give it one more go? You wanna try one more time, Vio? Give it one more shot. Here we go. Oh, okay, we're closer. 
This is like if my avatar and Humpty Dumpty had a baby. <laughs> What happened to the jawline? Look on the mask of my boy. Oh boy. Okay. With this, I think we can safely confirm my suspicion that extended clips only use the context of the clip that they were generated from. So anything happening off camera, anything that becomes hidden before the end of the clip is forgotten. This significantly limits the utility of this feature because any details you want to preserve for longer than 16 seconds have to remain in focus for the entire scene. But if you leave them in focus for too long, you suffer from massive loss of quality like we saw in the Lindy Hop debacle. For these reasons, the Scene Builder Extend feature is basically useless in its current state. Hopefully we'll have more success with the Jump 2 feature, which is coming right up. Hey gang, before we get to the final test, I did want to take just a second and give a shout out to a couple of users who commented on one of my previous videos. I know that I probably come off to a lot of you as an abrasive, mean-spirited prick and you know, fair enough, I can be sometimes, especially when a multi-billion dollar corporation decides to sell me a shit product and not give me my money back. But believe it or not, I do actually very much value kindness. And in particular, the kind of kindness that doesn't expect anything in return. So I just wanted to take a second to recognize and reward positive behavior when I see it, because I think that's important to do. User O Random who left an extremely helpful guide on how to create photorealistic images in mid-journey with a simple prompt adjustment. I made it the pinned comment on that video and I'll also include it in the description of this video. So if you'd like to scroll down and copy it and start using it, I've already started using it in mid-journey and the results have been pretty fantastic. So thank you so much for that, my friend. I really appreciate it. And user Christian, I don't know how to say your username, but I'm so sorry, but um, this comment is easily one of the nicest things that anyone has ever said to me. Uh, certainly the nicest thing that I've ever heard from a complete stranger. So thank you, my friend. I appreciate the support. I genuinely do. Um, I told you I was going to frame this comment and I meant it. I'm going to. <laughs> I'll show it to you next video. Also, as a reminder, my access to VO3 is ending on the 23rd of this month. So. I need to spend those credits on something. If you have suggestions for prompts or experiments or anything that I can do to burn through these credits in VO3, please leave it in the comments below. I'll leave a pinned comment to remind you, but I need to spend these things or they're just gonna go to waste. So first come, first serve. If you have a good idea or even a shitty idea, drop it in the comments and I'll give it a look, I promise. Anyway, let's get back to the video. For my final test, I was going to try to use the Jump 2 feature, but unfortunately that feature does not exist. It's a myth, a legend. It's three raccoons stacked up in a trench coat. My buddy and I created 10 extremely simple prompts, each one with a secondary Jump 2 prompt, which was meant to cut to a different angle or show a different perspective in the same scene. But 10 times out of 10, the clip just extended from the final frame even when it was explicitly told to cut to a different shot. I think that if I had used the extend button, it would have had exactly the same result. Some of them at least attempted to include the new prompt, but mostly they just kind of ignored it or tried to somehow blend the two of them together. Here are a few of my favorites. This one was supposed to cut to this guy driving to work in a luxury car. And when it completely fails, you can see his, ref <laughs> you can see his reflection in the mirror break and he looks so disappointed in himself. Well, you f***ing should be. This one was supposed to cut to show the view through the woman's binoculars, but instead it just does <laughs> whatever this sh is right here. Very good, 10 out of 10 VO. This one with the chef was the closest one to succeeding. It was supposed to cut to an overhead shot of the cake he was working on, but the cut was weird and the cake was missing a big piece and then it just immediately jumps back to the original shot. So like, I can't even give this one half credit. It gets quarter credit. And that's being pretty f***ing generous, if I'm honest. So the final score for this test was 0 0.25 out of 10, which is not, <laughs> which is not great, guys. So jump two isn't even a thing. It's not even a feature. It doesn't exist. It's a button that basically has no purpose. I don't know why they included it. User interface issues. These are things that didn't really fit into the rest of the video, but they're also not insignificant issues with the user interface. For one thing, you can't scroll to the right. Once you generate enough clips to fill the screen, the extend button gets real sneaky like and hides behind the arrange button. And then if you manage to click on it again, you can't extend further unless you refresh the page and start again with an empty queue, which is super not great, just gonna say. Most of the time, the thumbnails for the clips do not display properly in the UI. So there's no way to distinguish between them unless you click on them to play 
in the preview, which is also kind of annoying. Basically, the user interface is as trash as the rest of VO3, and I hate it. Some of this stuff would have been so simple to fix. And considering the amount of money they're clearly throwing at this project, I can't imagine why they wouldn't have polished the user interface just a little bit more. It's embarrassing. In conclusion, Scene Builder is basically useless. Best case scenario, you might be able to extend and maintain consistency between two eight second clips, but beyond that, the probability of maintaining coherence within a scene reduces exponentially with every added clip. This is why very often when you see VO3 videos where they attempt longer sequences, the characters will often shapeshift between scenes and look slightly or significantly different. Without the ability to maintain coherence within extended sequences, the utility of the software will remain extremely limited. And that's not even bringing up the significant and immediate drop in quality with each extension. Like, even if you manage to work around the coherence issue by just keeping everything important in a static shot the whole time, the quality drop is going to render basically any extended scene unusable after, like, the third clip. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. Again, as a reminder, I have a limited window of time before I have to use up all of these credits. We've got about two weeks left. So if you would like to suggest a prompt or an experiment or something for me to do, please put it in the comments now so that I have time to actually use the credits. First come, first serve. Get your comments in now. Appreciate the support, everybody. Thank you so much. I'll see you all next time.